The Red Storm have now won eight of their last nine, five Big East contests in a row. Um, and for a team that looked like it would have a hard time getting into the dance, looks like they're headed that way. They continue to play like this, 17-9, and 7-6 and six in the Big East. And we bring in head coach Steve Lavin to the show. Steve, it's Michael and Don. How you doing? Good. Glad to be with you, fellas. Uh, what made you think when your team struggled out of the gate that we're going to be very good in the middle of uh, February? Mike, uh, Mike Vaccaro on the post quoted you as saying that, and boy, you look very prescient right now. What made you believe? Well, number one is, you know, as a coach, your staff, uh, you know your personnel, you know your roster better than anybody because we recruited these kids and we work with them on a daily basis on skill development um, in our practices, and uh, we know their character, we know their makeup, um, and similar to a family, you know, uh, you know your children well, and in coaching, you know your players very well. And so we'd had three straight top ten recruiting classes, but I knew early in this season we were going to struggle because we had a tough schedule, a freshman point guard, Rishi Jordan. Every freshman goes through that transition from high school to college. We had two players, Orlando Sanchez had a shoulder labrum surgery, was out six months this off season. Phil Green had a hip labrum surgery, was out six months this off season. Uh, we had D'Angelo Harrison coming back from a team suspension last year. The dynamic as he came back into the fold was going to take some time before he could assume the leadership, be accepted by this group uh, as he has as he is now. And then we had a couple players like God's Gift and Max Hooper who didn't play last year. And so you add that up with a tough schedule. I knew it would take us uh, November, December, January uh, to work things out, very much like an alchemist. Uh, there's chemistry that's at play here. But I also knew, because we recruited these kids, we know their character, their makeup, their ability, uh, that we could be a really tough team come February. That said, at 0-5 in the conference to start, Coach, are you having to talk them up? All the things you just told us, is that what you had to constantly remind them during that stretch? No doubt about it. Uh, you have to create context uh, because younger people don't always see the big picture, and you don't want them to lose their confidence. Uh, it could become a situation where they're fragile or start to believe they don't have what it takes to get over the top. But we were knocking on the door from the Georgetown blowout. They beat us badly uh, a little over a month ago. And from that game forward, even when we lost a heartbreaker to DePaul, a double overtime game to Providence, a buzzer beater at Creighton, the team was making progress. We were closing the gap, and you could see it was just a matter of time until we'd have that breakthrough. So we would give context, talk about Ohio State losing 6 of 7, North Carolina losing 6 of 7, uh, Oregon losing 7 of 8. Um, you know, it happens in college basketball, Wisconsin dropping 6 of 7 in the league. Teams get beat, and the key is continuing to improve. And that's why there's so many teams in the last 15, 20 years who've made it to the Final Four, and yet they've got 11, 12, 13, 14 losses on their resume. But those teams were able, coming out of strong leagues, to get better through those losses, to learn. Now, don't get me wrong. We want to win every game. We're not into moral victories. But in reality, no one's gone undefeated in college basketball since Bob Knight's Hoosiers back in 76. And so the key is, do you continue uh, to make progress, and, and we've been able to do that, and it's a tribute to the kids' character that they fought back, showed some resourcefulness, some resolve, or a resoluteness to make this a special season. We have lots of work ahead of us, but we're in a better place than we were a month ago, and that's the good news. St. John's head coach Steve Lavin is our guest on the Michael K. Show. Did it have added meaning to beat Georgetown the way they beat you earlier? A guy like Sir Dominic Pointer was 0-5 lifetime against them, and he's a junior, so what did it mean to your team to beat Georgetown? Well, as I mentioned last night after the game, naturally, if you're a competitor, any time you've uh, been on the receiving end of some beatdowns, uh, as we have, um, you want to bounce back, and uh, you want to beat down the opponent that beat you early in the year. Um, and, and while that's important because it's a great rivalry, it's great for our fans, it engages our base uh, in terms of the Johnny's Nation, and uh, of course... Uh, we take pleasure in, in beating down to Georgetown, the garden, in our own house. Uh, but the bigger picture here is, are we improving? We want to play our best basketball uh, come February and March. That's always the goal, to begin to hit on all cylinders. And it doesn't guarantee success in the NCAA tournament, but uh, it certainly enhances the chances if you're playing your best basketball late in the year. And fortunately, we are. 
Um, and Georgetown's been a consistent winner. We're trying to get back to that level that Coach Karnaseka had it, uh, that Coach Lapchick had the program at, and uh, Frank McGuire had the program at, going back to the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. But the last 25 years, we've struggled as a program, and that's what we're working at tirelessly to get us back to a point where we can be a consistent winner, return the program to be in the crown jewel of college basketball in New York City. And we're getting there, but it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight, uh, but we feel we're moving in the right direction. Coach, 17 wins. you got five games left on your schedule. Is there enough time to do damage on your schedule to maybe get an invite even without having to make a run in the Big East? You know, I think um, we control our own destiny, uh, Mm -hmm. so to speak. You know, the captain of our fate or the master of our destiny here. If we take care of business, if we stay grounded on enhancing and elevating our level of play on both sides of the ball, and uh, we we don't get caught up in the fantasy of the future in the NCAA tournament, but instead stay on the grind, as we call it, the hammer to rock, working each day, uh, then we can accumulate enough wins. we got a hold serve at home against Butler tomorrow night, a very dangerous Butler team. It's played six overtime games in this conference. They've dropped five of them, but they've taken everyone, the top of the league, right down to the wire. Creighton came down the last minute uh, overtime, maybe double overtime to Villanova in a loss earlier this year at Hinkle Fieldhouse. So it starts with Butler, and uh, then we move down the line. Villanova, we've got Xavier DePaul at home. Uh, We travel to Villanova in that matchup, and then we finish at Marquette, and then there's the conference tournament uh, on our home court in Madison Square Garden. So uh, we do have enough time. We can control our own destiny here. If we take care of business, stay humble, stay hungry, uh, keep playing together in the cohesive manner that we have recently, then uh, this team's got a very bright future, not just this year, uh, but even looking down the line.